The PSAT is literally free money in 2025. And this past week, each of the Prep Hub founders got over $500,000 in scholarships just because we went three for three on national merit. We're also very high SAT scores. So let's talk about the PSAT and how it works. So what exactly is the PSAT? Well, it's the preliminary SAT and it's also the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. It's taken by 3.5 million 11th graders every year, usually in October, and it's structured exactly like the SAT, just with a whole lot easier questions. It's also scored out of 1520, and each section is scored out of 760 points. Now, here's the twist. Your scores are converted into a selection index score where your reading and writing subsection matters twice as much as your math section. So here's how this looks in play. On the top, we have a student who scored a 1490 on their PSAT, and on the bottom, the student scored a 1470. But why did they have the same selection index score? It's because the student on the top had less points in reading and more on math, and the bottom vice versa. Now let's take a look at some questions on the PSAT versus the SAT and compare and contrast. Now this top question is question 22 on PSAT module two math. So this is essentially the hardest type of math question that you could see on the PSAT. And it only shows up as question 14 on the SAT. So what this means is that a moderately difficult question on the SAT is going to be an extremely hard question on the PSAT. What that means is that your PSAT is a whole lot easier than your SAT. So why does the PSAT matter at all? A good score can help you in so many different ways. Getting started with scholarships. Becoming a National Merit semifinalist or finalist can lead to you receiving several full rides or major aid worth hundreds of thousands of dollars from hundreds of colleges across the United States. In our description, we've listed all of the colleges that you will get a substantial benefit from. Next, there is elite recognition associated with being a National Merit semifinalist or finalist. Because you're in the top 1%, this is a prestigious academic honor for your awards both to colleges and as a job. Finally, the college application boost. This signals to top 20 universities that you are a top 1% student, and this can really help you stand out on tough admissions. So how do these awards work? The most generalized recognition that most kids receive on the PSAT is commended scholar. This means you scored very high, often within the top 10% of the nation, but you still fell below your state's cutoff. Typically, as long as your PSAT is above the index of 210, you should be good for commended scholar. Now, if you want to be a top 1% scorer and receive the recognition of semifinalist, this means you scored at or above your state's 1% cutoff. Cutoffs vary on by every single state depending on how competitive the state is. For example, if you live in New Jersey, you're totally fried because their cutoff is a 225 out of 228, meaning you'll need very close to a perfect score. Whereas if you're in Sweet Home, Alabama, you're going to be just fine with an average or slightly above average PSAT score. Okay, now you've been named a National Merit Semifinalist. Okay, hold on. Oh, yeah. Am I are you recording right now or not? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we can enter it out. Okay. Okay, now you've been named a semifinalist. Now what? The next step in your journey is becoming a finalist. So first of all, why does being a finalist matter? Because finalist status comes out in March of your senior year after you submitted applications to all the prestigious colleges. So the last award you're sending out to colleges is going to be that you got the semifinalist status. But if you are gunning for those top tier scholarships from your local state schools, you need to become a finalist as the better your status is, the more aid and more um, stipends and all that you're going to get. So in order to become a finalist, you need to complete an application kind of like Common App where you submit your awards, honors, you submit an essay and report a qualifying SAT slash ACT score. What that means is, for example, if the cutoff for um, National Merit semifinalist in your state is a 1450 for PSAT, you need to get a 1450 on your SAT in order to be eligible to become a finalist. And don't worry, if you, were, if you were able to score a 1450 on your PSAT in October of your junior year, you have a whole year and a half until December of your senior year to send out that qualifying score. So you will get that. 
And another thing is 95% of semifinalists become finalists. So out of 16,000 semifinalists, 15,000 advance to that finalist section. So all you really need to make sure is that you have good grades. Again, National Merit will get your transcript. So make sure that if you're an A student or if you have a couple Bs and Cs mixed in, you're fine. But if you're failing your classes and stuff, that could affect your potential be to become a finalist. And your next step and the last step in this journey to becoming a National Merit Demon is becoming a National Merit Scholar. So 47.5% of finalists become scholars. So it is a little more competitive. And if you're named a scholar, you receive a $2,500 scholarship that goes toward a college of your choice. So the way you're going to distinguish yourself among all these other finalists is through that essay and through that application you submitted back when you completed your finalist application. If your essay stands out and if your awards and honors stand out, you will likely place yourself in the top 47.5% of, of those other finalists. So that's how you become a scholar and, and your journey. Okay, so how do you study for the PSAT? Well, first of all, study as you would for your SAT, learn the same concepts and stuff, and also make sure you take all six or all 10 of your Blue Book practice tests because the structure and the content and the format is the same, so that will translate. But there are two designated PSAT practice tests on Blue Book offered by College Board. And the thing with these is unlike the SAT where your Blue Book practice tests are not really similar to your actual SAT tests, these are. So these are super good indicators of what you're gonna get on your PSAT. Number two, master Desmos. Now PSAT math, as you all have seen, is a lot easier than SAT math. So it's going to be a lot more Desmosable. That means if you master all your Desmos tricks, you can just use it and ace the math section. And number three, know all grammar rules. Now for PSAT reading, common sense and intuition is good enough to get you all those questions right. But grammar rules are going to be consistent with how it's tested on the SAT. So if you don't know certain grammar rules, you can miss out on free points and potentially lose out, lose out on that semifinalist status because again, every question matters, especially in readings. So make sure you know those grammar rules so you're good with that and you can ace your reading section. Before we end the video, we just wanted to give out a huge thanks to all 4,000 of you who have decided to subscribe to Prep Hub. We really appreciate your support and we will continue to make high quality test prep videos in the future. To celebrate, the top comment on this video gets to pick what our next video is about. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hop off YouTube, lock in on your PSAT within the next week, and be sure to check out prephubtp.com for the hardest SAT practice you've ever seen. Before we wrap up, I want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. If you're studying for the SAT, you know practice is everything, but the way you practice matters. Brilliant makes learning actually stick by letting you play with concepts. Their interactive lessons are hands-on, not just videos, and that approach is proven to be much more effective than passive studying. I've been using their math courses like visual algebra and solving equations, and it feels more like solving puzzles than doing drills. That's exactly the kind of intuition the SAT tests. Problem solve, not memorizing. To start learning for free, head to brilliant.org slash prephub, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. On top of that, Brilliant is giving our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription so you can unlock all their courses and keep building the habit daily. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel and see you later.